There we go. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. What's up, y'all? Lockout men. I am back again with another podcast interview, a special podcast interview. This young lady reached out to me after watching the Hirschbach video. You know, the Hirschbach is foes. You know, where, you know, former drivers or current drivers come on and talk about their companies. Well, she's here to clarify some things that was said in the video. And of course, you guys know me. I, you know, I, my, my platform is open to everybody. You know what I'm saying? So she's the media and social, no, marketing and social media manager for Hirschbach. She been rocking there for three years. I would like to bring to the stage Bianca Sanchez. What is going on, little lady? You know, it's a beautiful day and I'm, I'm enjoying it. I really appreciate you having us on today. I I appreciate you uh I appreciate you reaching out and uh coming on. I mean, you know, like I said, I'm I'm the type of I'm the type of, you know, driver, you know, I I, I don't, you know, I don't I don't hate on on companies, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm just here mm -hmm. to, you know, give the new jacks, you know, the opportunity to make their decision, you know, make their decision wiser. And coming off of coming off the success of the make the call videos, you know, I yeah. I started, you know, started the Expose series, you know, where I give, you know, drivers their opportunities to come on and talk about, you know, the companies that, you know, they drive or mm -hmm. driven for, you know, because I got a lot of, you know, I got a lot of comp compliments, a lot of comments of people saying, hey, you know, we, we know the recruiters is just going to just going to say what they're going <laughs> to say to get them get them in the company we want to know we want to know what the driver we want to know how the driver yeah, feel absolutely. about that company so you know i opened up uh opened up the forum and you know we had a few and uh and uh welcome welcome you to come in and you know clarify some things so yeah. miss well, I Miss uh, Sanchez, Miss Sanchez, uh, the floor is yours. What, yeah. what would you like to? What would you like to clarify? Introduce yourself to everybody first, so they'll they'll know. Even though I already did, but you know, let them know where where you come from, <laughs> sure. what you rock out with. Absolutely. Well, I'm I'm Bianca Sanchez, like you said. I do the marketing and social media for Hirschback, and I've been with the company for going on three years now, mm -hmm. and I I really love the company. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. I don't think any company is. But um, I've, I've never worked at a place where I felt that they truly cared about their employees and about their drivers and everyone involved in the organization. And so I've, I've been enjoying it. This is my first real job in the transportation industry. And I will tell you, I have learned a lot. There is a lot to trucking and logistics and there's not a better group of people out there and everything that the drivers do for us every day for this country is just amazing. So I just want to put that out there. Thank you to okay. everyone who drives okay, that's and is up. involved. So what is, and, uh, what, what exactly is a marketing and social media manager? What, what, what exactly do you do? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, we always giggle about this when people ask me what I do because I actually do a lot more than just marketing and social media. Okay. Um, I, de I deal a lot with the, um, the advertising side of things, like advertising for uh, driving positions, advertising for people to work in the office. Um, I do a lot with, obviously, with the, our social media channel. So I put a lot of information out on our, our blog and what's going on with, like, Facebook and YouTube and all of those platforms. Um, I do, we have company stores, so I oversee all of our branded merchandise. Mm -hmm. I have a hand in pretty much every event that we put on within Hirschback. Um, that includes like truck shows and all those kinds of things. Um, Hirschback actually has a podcast, so I do the podcast and, um, I just do a lot of different stuff. I have my hands in just about everything okay. that has to do with, uh, marketing or branding. It's, it's a lot of fun. 
So in in the in the uh, social media, the Facebook page, the uh, Hearstbach mm-hmm. uh, Transportation Service page, are is that you or is that other people in there talking? As far as when when people you know be asking questions about the company, it is predominantly me. So about ninety nine percent of the time, if you get a response, it's probably coming from me. Okay, and. Um, we have a handful of people who um, are admins on that account. So there might be some people from recruiting who are also responding, but 99.9% of the time, the response is me. It's a real person. I am a real person. <laughs> I do. I do send out like real emails to people and, and talk to them. So when somebody's responding, it is 100% me. Okay. So I, I was kind of wondering because like when, when, you know, Trucking companies use social media as an outlet to reach out to some of these uh, potential drivers out here. I always wonder uh-huh. who is the who, who's the person that's talking in the background because I was I was in a conversation with uh, with KB and I you know I didn't I, I don't think I called him out but. The, the one guy asked them how much was their CPM amount, like, you know, and I think that's yeah. a fair question to ask, you know, but oh, the, yeah. the person that responded in there says, OK, well, I'll, I'll answer that in your PM, in your you know private message. And I came in and I said, well, why not let us know in the general in the general ch- uh, in the general chat, because that's where. He came and asked. It wasn't like he came and said, mm-hmm. "Hey, let me ask you a question in a private message." I mean, in a private messenger, he asked a question in a general chat, and you know, the person kind of, kind of got in their feelings and came back at me. But I always wondered who who <laughs> was the who was the person or persons that was that was behind the social media uh, uh, sponsorship for their companies. Yeah. There, there are some uh, vendors that advertise. Sometimes, if you see those, those are being run by those companies' pages, like say uh, CDL Life or um, CDL Career Now. Mm-hmm. But anything that is a Hirschback post, if it's being responded to, it, it's a real person, and it's most likely going to be me. And I do try to be very. Um, I try to answer every question as forthrightly as possible. And okay. sometimes the questions are so complicated that it would be too much to try to answer it in one post. So I just say, hey, here's a couple quick answers. It would be easier if we could talk to you um, just because it's so much information to try to type out. OK, OK, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So let's uh, let's get to the meat of it, man. You uh, you 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 yeah. saw the. You saw the podcast with uh with with the with the gentleman Shane. Uh you emailed yeah. me. You uh you emailed me and in, in your email you said that, you know, he he may not have been fully informed and you would like to come on and uh you know, give a little bit more content or context to yeah, uh, sure. what what was said in 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 his podcast. So well yeah what was i would like to go ahead well i want to i want to start i just want to make sure that that shane knows and and the rest of the world knows i think he did a great job and i really enjoyed the podcast uh i I shared it with our recruiting managers and i shared it with the chief people officer and we all thought it was a great podcast so i don't want anybody to think that we were upset or reached out because we were upset about anything because we think shane did a great job Mm -hmm. um the only reason I reached out is because he was only with us for a few months. And so sometimes they might not know everything. And I think he does a fantastic job. I haven't met him personally, okay. but being the social media person, I pay close attention to what's being posted in our groups and, right. you know, whose who's faces are out there. And I saw quite a bit of him. And so I, I was very impressed with all of his posts that he was always putting out, his content. Mm-hmm. So I want to make it very clear that I thought he did a fantastic job. Okay. And we were not in the least bit upset about the podcast. Okay. That's um, what's up. And That's you do a great up. job too. Okay. I, I watched a few and I thought, I think you do great. Oh, thank um, you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we, the only, a couple of things I wrote notes on and I'm sorry, cause I'm about a week out. So I'm trying to, uh, 
Oh I no, like, you, you good. Take notes. your take your time. <laughs> take your time. <laughs> Ask me any questions, I'm happy to clarify. Um there you go. a couple of things I heard pop up that I just wanted to clarify on that uh, the rider policy, we do have a rider policy. We have a pet policy. Mm-hmm. So uh, both riders and pets are allowed on the truck. Okay. Riders do need to be 10 years old uh, in order to be on the truck. Okay. Um, we had a, a, a special thing going on during the coronavirus where we knew some families were having issues with not having child care. So we allowed children from five and up onto the truck. Okay. Um, it's one one rider. And pets are allowed. We have a pet deposit. You are able to break that up over the um, into payments, so it's not one lump deposit. So it's totally refundable. So there's a, there's a there's a, a pet fund for the pets, but none none for the none for the riders. None for the riders. You just have to make sure you fill out a um, a form. Just so we know that they're on the truck for insurance purposes that we're aware, uh, and that way we know you have a writer that's been approved and you're good to go. Okay. Do they gotta do they gotta ask do do they gotta do that first, or can they like you know when they on their home time and they figure that one of their you know kids or one of their family members want to jump on the truck with them and then they can just do it through the com through the com yeah. call, call com or they can call it in. We actually have a mobile app, so you can talk to your driver manager and just say, hey, I want one of my kids to go on the truck with me or my wife or whoever, and um, they'll have you fill out. There's The form is right on the app. You fill out the form and you submit it, and you're usually good to go. If there's any issues, they'll come back and say, hey, we have a problem with this. Normally, the only issue is that you have another CDL holder on the truck because um, we, we can't have that unless they're going to be – and as a driver, you can't have another CDL holder just kind of riding on your truck. Because you guys Insurance might be. Insurance purposes. Yeah, you, and also you guys might yeah. be afraid that they can, you know, trade off of one another. You know, he can, you yeah. know, they can drive, yeah. they can drive on that person's clock while that person is yep. whatever. So, yeah, I understand that. I understand that fully. All right, go ahead, continue. Uh, so those were those were two. Um, one of the things uh, I did want to clarify, and and I can attest to this personally because I I sit close to recruiting at the office and I hear it nonstop. Mm-hmm. We do tell people up front it is a walk away lease um, for those that are doing the lease purchase option. Um, we do make sure that that's clear up front, and uh, it is in the contract that you know should you want to terminate, you can at any time. Um, there is not a fee to terminate the contract, and we do the pay is held for the 45 days. Um, the last settlement is held for the 45 days, and then it will pay out. Um, but that's all in the contract. We try to make sure that we highlight all of that uh, right off the bat, and make sure that people are aware that we definitely let people know right up front. Walk away, leave. Okay. Okay. The big so, selling point. So my. I guess my I guess my thing is this because not not only not only Shane has you know said something about the company but there was other drivers that yeah. that said something about the company. You guys, sure. you guys push leases on on to a potential driver even if they was just coming in looking for a company position. Ah, good question. So there's. Um, I always make sure that we have this distinction. We have over the road and we have dedicated. On our dedicated account, we always have company and lease purchase option available. On the over the road side, the OTR side, we have both company and lease, but the company side of the fleet is full. There's just not any company positions available. So typically on OTR, the only thing available is the lease purchase. Every now and then, um, it opens up. We have company available, and believe me, we advertise the heck out of it when it happens. And those positions fill up very quickly. But we do, on the OTR side, it is pretty much lease purchase. But on the dedicated side, which we have quite a bit of dedicated, um, it's company or lease option. Okay, okay. So as as of right now, there's there's no company positions available OTR. Yeah, yeah. Right oh. now, it's 
pretty much the only thing available is the lease purchase option. All right. So the lease purchase talk, talk me through how you guys actually do the lease purchase. I mean, from, from how much that you guys offer to the trucks and to what type of, I guess what type of ownership that the, that the, that the potential driver have, because I'm thinking like, you know, the way I think Mm -hmm. um, is that when you offer a lease purchase to the driver, the driver is, is like in in control of his truck. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, he's able to pick his own load. See, he's able to, do you know whatever you know whatever it is he wants to do but from from what i've been getting is that the driver don't have no control over that you know he he's set up with a driver manager driver manager picks his loads or or give him an option of of how many loads he can choose from and and Mm -hmm. so forth and so on so walk walk me through that process uh, from the, you want to know about the load process, like the DMs. Once you're set, you have a truck, you're going that side. Well, yeah, walk walk me through from like, you know, the person. I mean, you know, what what type of, you know, like how much, you know, the uh, do they get a cent per mile, right? It's not a it's not a percentage or nothing like that, right? Right. We do. Um, I'm going to make this, uh, I'm going to clarify this because you're going to have some people who tell you one thing and some with another. Okay. We do have some operators who are on percentage. Most of those have been with us for a very long time or they're an owner operator Mm -hmm. and they are on percentage. So I'm going to clarify that because there are people out there who say, well, I know so-and-so and they run percentage. Yes, we do have people who are on percentage, but the, the bulk of our folks who come in, as a lease purchase, um, they are on a sliding scale that is paid per mile and it is higher on the, sh- the shorter the load or the shorter the haul, the higher the, the cent per mile is. So it starts at like 273 per mile and the lowest, the absolute lowest for the longest haul is going to be a dollar per mile. Now, Ooh. a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, a dollar per mile. I know, I know. Yeah. But we have, yeah. we only, our operators only pay 99 cents for fuel. And that's every one of our operators. So we have quite a few people who do very, very well. So when people are like, oh my gosh, a dollar amount, believe me, they're making money here. Um, but a big part of that is that we only, you only pay 99 cents per gallon for fuel. Mm, a dollar amount. Yeah. Um. Do you guys? Do you guys? Uh. Do you guys price match? I mean, that's. I mean, like, let's say, if, <laughs> let's say, if another company, let's say that you know, Hirschbach is the is the place they want to come to and say, yo, I really want to mess with Hirschbach. I really want to. I really want to drive for Hirschbach, but <laughs> that dollar a mile is like, uh. But company B. It's offering me like a dollar, five dollar, ten dollar, twenty. Well, okay, but most of our people are not. They're not averaging a dollar a mile. They are averaging up at the one thirty, a dollar thirty, a dollar thirteen, kind of on the low end of the spectrum. Because because it's it's because it's it's not a dollar. Because it's a sliding scale. It's a sliding scale. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It is not very often that you're going to have loads where you're making only a dollar a mile. Which I mean, it's still no less than a dollar a mile, but most of them are going to be averaging higher on that scale. Okay, so well, let me ask you this: if if that, where where does the dollar a mile start? What's 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 the mile average that the dollar a mile start? Do it start at two thousand? Do it start at fifteen hundred? Um, Do it start at a thousand? Let me pull that up for you, real quick. Okay, I don't know it by heart. Uh, 1800 plus miles. So okay. anything over 1800 miles is so going to be a dollar, a, dollar a, mile. a mile. So if I get a low for say cross country, because cross country is about, you know, 1800, 2000 plus, yeah. Yeah. uh, that will be a dollar a mile. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, when you, but when you, you now, now yeah. as a company, I'm not, I'm now, not, now as a company driver, as a company driver, I'm looking at a dollar a mile. That's damn good. Like, you know, hey, bam, that's $1,800 right there. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But as, as a lease, as a lease operator that got to pay for the truck, that got to pay for the mm-hmm. fuel, that got to, you know, pay for everything else, that's not looking too hot right now. And I'm, I, and I know, I, 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 I know you saying that it's, you know, that's, you know, they don't just make the dollar yeah. a mile; it's a dollar thirty. But I'm just using, I'm just using that as an average right now. That's all. Well, I totally get that. Um, like Shane and Shane said this as part of it, we don't run a lot where it's going to be across the country. Most of our loads are hauling Midwest to like the Southeast or the Northeast. Um, and then and kind of back again. We don't do a lot that's going across the country. So most all of our loads, we do go across country, but mm-hmm. most all of our loads are going to be in that sweet spot where you're making much more than a dollar a mile. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I, I noticed a lot of Hirschbach uh, uh, tractor trailers, like Midwest, Northeast, mm-hmm. uh, a few a few down south. Uh, which brings me to uh, my question, um, and I, I think I have asked this of Shane, and I think I have asked this uh, one other time, but um, are you being, a, and I'm talking about a lease driver, it goes back to where I'm saying what the driver has control of his truck. So yeah. are they are, are they uh, forced dispatch in the areas uh, like New York, California, uh, let's say Miami. Miami's a messed up town too. So yeah, so let's say like Miami and <laughs> stuff like uh, areas like that. So for lease operators, one hundred percent, we we promise if you do not want to go to New York City, we will not send you to New York City. Okay. Um, we do a lot of freight to the Northeast, um, not a lot to California, but a lot in the Northeast. Um, so we do look for operators who are willing to run those areas. Mm-hmm. You are, they are, you are welcome to turn down loads, um, at, at any time. We do not force you to take the load. Um, it generally goes a little bit easier if, um, if you kind of take what's available, cause then that way you're moving, you're making your money. Um, but a lot of times what happens is the drivers and the, and the driver managers, they, they work together to figure out what works for them. And mm-hmm. so we know there's a lot of drivers who would prefer to haul freight uh, in certain areas or prefer to just completely stay out of Chicago or completely stay out of New York. Mm-hmm. And, and we work with them. Um, but coming in and, and saying right off the bat, like, I'm not going to run here. I'm not going to run there. I'm not going to run there. It, it's probably not going to work out great. And, um, and it, it's not going to be a success for you at Hirschback because these are places that are hot spots for us. Okay. So if, if you're willing to run in those areas, you're going to make good money with us. And um, But you are welcome to turn down loads. We're not going to force you to take it if you don't want to take it or you're not comfortable with it. Okay, okay. Now let's say, let's, let's say this scenario that, you know, that the driver do turn down loads that the, that the dispatcher finds for them. Does the, the does if 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 he or she turns down, uh, you know, too many loads, then is there going to be some type of well, friction between that driver no. and the and the uh, and the fleet manager? It, I I want to say no. People are people, and sometimes you're going to catch somebody on a bad day, and that goes for both drivers and, and fleet managers. Mm-hmm. Um, I would – the answer to that is no. The downside is that if you're turning down a lot of loads, and this is just you know speaking from a specifically financial point of view, mm-hmm. if you're turning down a lot of loads, you're sitting and you're not making money. And that's the last thing we want because you still have a truck payment fixed cost coming out, and the last thing we want is for you to not be successful. And so if you're turning down a lot of loads, it might not be the place for you here, 
but we're going to work hard to try to make you successful. So if you're willing to work with us, then we're going to work with you. And, you know, I, I know Shane mentioned um, kind of his relationship deteriorating with, the, with his yeah. driver manager. And, yeah. and that was, and that one kind of hit me hard. And a lot of it comes for me, a lot of it comes down to communication. And so people are people, you're not going to hit it off with everybody. And, and we get that. And, and people have different ways they like to be communicated to. And so if mm-hmm. it's not working out with one person or you're frustrated, you know, take it to the next level, let their boss know, let somebody know. I have a lot of people that, um, I am, I have relationships I've built with our drivers just mm-hmm. through social media and connecting at events. And so even though I might not be in charge of it, people will reach out to me and they'll say, Hey, I'm, I'm so frustrated with this. Can you help me? And, and I'll get them to the right person, but sometimes all it takes is raising the hand and saying, look, I'm frustrated and I don't know what to do. And, you know, we're going to do everything we can to get you taken care of and, and make it successful for you here. Okay. 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 So Hirschbach. Yes, sir. We have on the line Bianca Sanchez. She is the <laughs> marketing and social media director of Hirschbach. And of course she decided to come on to definitely clarify uh, some things that was said in the previous podcast with a former driver and to, uh, you know, give uh, some more clarification on Hirschbach itself. Um, so Hirschbach, man, I mean, you know, like I said, I, I heard so I heard so much good and so much bad uh, uh, about sure. Hirschbach. What, what what would you like to put out there that uh, about Hirschbach? What's Hirschbach is all about? Oh, you're going to hear a, a lot of different things. For me personally, I, I feel like our culture is a big, a big plus. Um, I, I've never seen a CEO and president who cares more about the people of the company. It's not just the bottom line. And, and so for me, like the culture of being a part of a, a team that treats themselves like family, and you're going to hear that resonated over and over again. I swear that's not something we tell people to say. Uh, they really just feel connected and they feel like they're part of something. And and I really appreciate that. Are we the perfect company for everybody out there? Absolutely not. Um, and, and we get that. And we want people who are going to be a great fit for us that we're going to be a great fit for them. So, um, oh, go ahead. And I think, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I, you, say, no, no. I think sometimes. Oh, no, go for it. No, no, yeah. no. You go ahead. You go ahead. No, I, I, my fault. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not good. Um, I think sometimes, I, and I see this a lot just through social media, through the comments on Facebook and, and things, uh, we do have a different CEO and president. Um, I don't want to say different. He's been with the company for a very long time, but he's now the owner of the company. So I hear some people who've talked about Hirschback's reputation from, say, 10, 15 years ago. And and we're not the same company we've been in business for 85 years but our culture has changed and a lot of stuff about our company has changed and and evolved i want to say in the last 10 years and so i definitely say you know check us out Mm -hmm. talk to our drivers there's a lot of drivers out there who are willing to talk with you mentor we have a ton of drivers and this is what i love that at any time they'll say hey tell so and so to call me if they're having issues and they'll mentor that driver to help them be a success at Hirschback because there is a learning curve and to find out kind of the tricks and tips to help make them successful. And I think the fact we have so many people that are willing to do that just speaks volumes for the type of company that we are. All right. So you mentioned not only OTR, but you guys have uh what is it dedicated or regional or, yeah. is, or is it the same dedicated and regional? They're pretty much the same. Uh, most of them stay in a specific region. Some of them go a little bit farther out. Um, but the dedicated routes are, you know, you're dedicated to that customer. You pretty much run the same route. And um, a lot of them get you home at least weekly. And some of them, we have a couple accounts that get you home daily. And um, so that's the perk on, on the dedicated accounts is that you get a little bit more home time. So and how, most of them come with a, an incentive pay. So how... How does a, I, I could see that for a company driver, working out for a company driver, mm-hmm. but how that works out for a lease driver that, that does that, that don't sound like <laughs> that many miles <laughs> if he, if he goes home every week. Yeah. 
Uh, so a lot of our accounts, um, they they have what they call an incentive pay. So they're they're pretty much going to get their set paycheck every week, regardless of how many miles they run, uh, as long as you know they they meet their their uh, qualifications, which is usually being available um, in the times that they're supposed to be available. Uh, so a lot of them, yeah, there's not a ton of miles. Other accounts, it's, you're going to make more than the incentive because you are running more miles, mm -hmm. but you get routed home. Uh, for the lead operators on those accounts, because you're kind of like me, my brain immediately goes to like the security side of things. I like that company getting the benefits of being a company driver. Right. But on the lead side, a lot of people really like it because you're able to expense on your taxes. And so tax wise, they make they come out making more money because they, they operate it uh, like a business and they're able to take a lot of those costs and make them expenses on their tax returns. Oh, OK. OK. Still don't sound enticing to me, but <laughs> but I mean, if, we if, got if a lot of people who do it and they really they like it, they're successful with it. I mean, obviously I, hey, something I, must be something must be working. So I mean, y'all, you yeah. you guys are doing this. So like I said, it's it's far be it for me, an uh, outsider looking in, just to come in and say, oh well, I, I don't you know think that works. But I'm just saying, you know, I, obviously it's working. But I'm just saying, I I'm trying to see it from the outside, and I just can't see it. <laughs> uh, as far as I, I understand. Oh, as as far as the trucks um uh being dedicated um now you said that now you said that it's like a you said that's like a a, a guarantee type deal so they get like a guarantee paid so they can be available is that availability like let's say for example uh let's take monday for example you know Mm -hmm. nothing's going on nothing's going on nothing's going on and then all of a sudden uh 1 a.m tuesday morning i get called for a load now if i turn yeah. that load down because you know i'm i'm sleep you know i've been up all day monday but if i turn that load down uh that tuesday morning that means i i won't be able to get my my guarantee pay so yes, in in the technical sense, yes. Um, on the dedicated accounts, um, there's not a lot of wiggle room for being able to turn down loads. Um, that's part of the the incentive pay. However, those accounts are a lot different in the sense that most of the times we know operationally like the loads. So those are usually handed out in advance. Um, and a lot of times they also know, like, if the plants are not going to be operating on, like, say, a holiday, so like Monday, they pretty much know when the loads are going to be coming out on Tuesday. So most of the time those are planned out well in advance, and okay. the drivers are well aware when they're probably going to be rolling. Okay, okay. All right. Well, Bianca Sanchez, marketing and social media di uh, manager of Hirschbach. Um Man, okay, okay. So you come on and uh, clarify a, a few things. All right, so let's uh, <laughs> let's talk about the trucks because uh, one one area yeah. one area of the conversation he said that uh, he, he he didn't feel the truck that he was in. So what what trucks do you guys yeah. offer? I mean, what trucks do you guys offer? Uh, what's the amenities are? Um, what's the amenities and what's the govern? Uh, what's the govern for a lease dr uh, lease yeah. truck? Sure. Um, so we, our fleet pretty much is made up of International Trostars, uh, Freightliner Cascadias, and Kenworth P680s. Um, we have more on the International and Freightliner side. Uh, the Kenworth, um, due to some of our dedicated accounts, like for the weights and and staying in weights with those loads. Um, some accounts do use particular trucks, um, the Kenworths especially, uh, but all of those are typically available. Uh, it is a kind of based on what we have in stock and availability and recruiting generally talks with incoming drivers and says, this is what we have available. You know, what sounds good to you? And we try to match you with the truck that you want. Um, we 
make sure they're all late models. So we are running 2018 to 2020s. We're going to have the 21, mainly Freightliners, that will be coming in a little bit later this year. Uh, we have, as far as amenities go, all the trucks come with a 24-inch TV, refrigerator, um, an inverter. Okay. All of the new trucks coming in in 20. So we did have, and you're going to hear some people talking about this, we have trucks in our fleet that have APUs, and we have some trucks that have the start-stop mm-hmm. feature. Um all of our new trucks coming in from here on out will have APUs. Okay. And uh, drivers are, lease operators can actually, if you, if you get a truck that doesn't have an APU, we have a program where you can put an APU on the truck. Uh, that's a very nice one. Uh, the All of the new trucks will have beer guards on the front mm-hmm. of them. And all of them, they come in, we get them all sterilized and cleaned. We have detail units that pretty much all of our terminals now. So when you come to get a truck, they're nicely detailed and ready to rock and roll for you. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So for the lease, uh, for the lease program, uh, how much is it per week, and how long is the lease? <laughs> so the length, and I'm going to tell you straight up, I don't know these numbers all the time. I, I'm constantly asking recruiters. <laughs> Just share okay. that information with me. Okay. So okay. these trucks are going to range uh, between six thirty-five and like seven thirty-five, and it, it's all dependent on the year of the truck and which truck you get. Um, okay. So you might get a 2018 International, and it's not going to be the same as a 2020 Freightliner. Um, so that's going to depend as well. The lease is dependent on which year truck you get. Okay. So some are two year and some are three year. All right. So after after the end of the lease is the truck mine. And can I take it so, with me to any other places? So to answer that question, yes and no. So yes, if you purchase a truck. We do tell you up front it's a walk away lease since you're putting no money down on it. There is a balloon payment at the end if you want to purchase the truck. Mm. A lot of people we have it go two ways, and I'm going to, I'm going to tell you this. Um, we have people who definitely want to buy the truck, and if you do want to purchase the truck at the end with the balloon payment, you we you can set up what we call an equity account, and you can have money pulled and put to the side so that it's saving that money for you, and at the end you can purchase your truck with the money you've had put in your equity that will cover your balloon payment. For people that don't know what balloon you, what balloon payment is, can you can you explain to them what a balloon payment is? Oh yeah, sure. Sure. So a lot of times uh if you're going to do a down payment, you would do it up front and that takes a big chunk off of your entire loan, right? Right. Um with with the walkway, you're not putting any money down. You're walk, you're getting into the truck, and you're making a payment on it. But the, it's almost like leasing a car. So at the end of it, you're only paying for that portion of the time you're using the vehicle. Right. At the end of it, there's a balance due to own it, and that's the balloon payment. So oh, okay. at the end of it, it might be twenty or thirty thousand um, dollars. But you're the, what you're paying on is your time of using that vehicle, and there's still a balance on actually owning it. Okay. So people can can set it up so that they're saving that money and they can they can purchase it. And we have quite a few people who say, I don't want to own a fleet truck. I just want to um, I just want to keep using this as a tax write off. And so they'll just roll into a new lease when their lease is up. They'll usually roll into a brand new truck. So so the lease so the lease changes for every time they decide to do a new lease. I mean, it doesn't like it doesn't. Let's say, for example, for that balloon payment that you said that they got to pay off the the new. They, uh-huh. Let's say they decide to do a new lease. It will start a whole new uh, a whole new thing. Or can that the new lease could roll off of what you already what you already put into the truck to go do a balloon payment for the truck, if that make any sense. Right. No, it would be it would be a new lease. Um, on the on the new truck, so they basically just say, okay, I got my expenses out of paying for this truck for two years, and I'm going to roll into this new lease. Okay, so and, 
Oh, go ahead. I'm going to throw this out there. Mm -hmm. We have an option. We we call it trick or shock, where drivers can actually pick, like order their own Freightliner Cascadia, mm -hmm. and they'll kind of put all the amenities they want on it, order it in the color that they want, and then they basically start a lease with that vehicle. Mm -hmm. And set it up so that they're making payments on it and are actually outright purchasing the truck. Oh, okay, okay. Now let me ask you this: What do you say to people? What do you what do you say to drivers? What do you say to the naysayers that say that all this is is just a glorified company driver? <laughs> I think you're going to get that everywhere with companies that have leads. We we don't think so. Um, it you are able to we help you get your LLC. It's your own business. I think the important part is remembering that you are operating it as a business. We have quite a few great mentors out there who are very, very good at this. But remembering that you're offering it as a business, running it up as a business, and that you are ultimately in control of of how that operates for you. And so, yes, you are able to turn down loads. No, we, we don't have a load board that you can pick and choose, but we do try to make it work for you as, in what you're looking for, what you want to run. Um, but no, I, I don't think it's a glorified company driver. There's a lot of risk that you take on, but we try to, to be there to help support and make it as successful as possible. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm, I, I get that a lot. I mean, especially if, if, if the driver again that goes that goes back to the driver controlling his truck the way he want his truck to you know the way he's the way he want to control his truck you know you guys not yeah. offering you guys not offering no type of low boards where he could pick and choose uh pick and choose where you know he want to go or not or whatnot um the 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 cpm before we get up out of here because i don't want to take too much of your time yeah. but the cpm uh, as you already stated, that is a sliding scale. But is it does is it differ between the driver that has, say, like two years versus a driver that has five years or more? Right now, no. I will tell you, um, at Hirschback, things change constantly. And that is definitely one of the things that we are working on is um, – incentive for loyalty and the longer that you're with us the, the more you get um so that is definitely one of the things that that we are looking at so i could say right now yes we it's it's the same no matter your tenure however two or three months from now this could be a different conversation i got you so uh we do have in we do have incentives in, in play right now for people um so if you if you come on with us at the end of a year, you get a five thousand dollar payout, and at the end of two years, you get a ten thousand dollar payout, and at the end of three years, you get a fifteen thousand dollar payout. So okay. we're constantly looking for ways to improve the experience uh, for our drivers and to to reward loyalty and people who've been with us. Mm -hmm. um, so long answer to that very simple question. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. Um, all right, so Bianca. Break down what 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 people need to uh, need to understand uh, coming into Hirschbach. What um, what they uh, what they what they about to get into with Hirschbach from uh, talking to the recruiter, uh, going through orientation, and getting into their truck. Yeah, so we have a great team of recruiters. They're all fantastic. I know Shane mentioned on his podcast that you know we're. We're honest. We're transparent. We're not going to lie to you to get you in the door because it does us no good to bring you on and have you leave a week later. You know, it, it costs a lot of money mm -hmm. to bring drivers on, and we, we want you to come on and we want you to stay. So uh, we have a great recruiting team. They're fantastic at what they do, but we're also very transparent about um, what it's like to work here. Uh, a fun part, we have a – we call it onboarding specialist. So you, there's a, an actual like kind of an interview, I would say with an onboarding specialist and um, that person stays with you for your first 90 days. Okay. So they're constantly checking in, seeing if there's anything that they can help you with, how things are going and trying to troubleshoot. Like if you're, if you're experiencing something that's um, 
you know, frustrating with ways that we can help you improve uh, that situation or, you know, make it better or fix it. If something's not right, we want to fix it. Um, so you have that onboarding specialist conversation. We set you up for orientation. We have two different orientations right now. Uh, we have an accelerated where you literally take care of everything before you ever show up. Okay. Um, all your online coursework gets done. You show up. We bring you in via a rental car, and um, no, no, no up, crack, no, no crack hound, right? No, no, no crack hound, right? <laughs> I mean, no, I, no greyhound. Right? I, I, I feel that these we, trucking companies making all this type of money, making, you know, making all this type of money, but yet use a greyhound to get a potential driver to to their orientation i just think that's kind of you know so so we do um we have used greyhound it is an option if you want to take it um but we typically prefer to fly you in or uh, give you a rental car especially right now with with the coronavirus um we're de- we're pretty much doing all rental cars uh okay. no public transportation and a few folks have we've actually flown them in on our corporate jet oh, okay. so that um, we're able to get them there if there's not if rental's not an option. Okay. Uh, but we you can get in on the accelerated orientation. This is the best part. You get in, you might do a couple hours worth of um, like going over a few things, making sure you understand how the reefer works and uh, understanding how the, we use GeoTab mm-hmm. and for our, our um, logging system, making sure you understand that and then. We have your truck ready to go. You get in. You make sure everything's great. You sign your paperwork, and you you roll out on your load. Um, we have the classroom option still uh, for folks who want to kind of get in, but they're still you know working through the process of the orientation, or you know maybe need to get their drug test done in person. Um, then we they have the classroom setting. We put them up in a hotel, feed them for a couple of days and mm-hmm. then get them on the road. That's the traditional orientation. And, uh, we, we match you up with your driver manager, usually before you, uh, you ever get here and, you know, facilitate an introduction, make sure everything sounds good, get you rolling. And mm-hmm. we have our team of people who kind of keep coming back and checking on you and making sure everything's going. Okay. All right. All right. Definitely, definitely. All right. Well, Bianca Sanchez, uh, Hirschbach. Oh, wait a minute. Wrong button again. There you go. Thank you for coming on and um, and uh, and uh, letting letting uh, letting people know what Hirschbach is all about. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, with with um, with with all that said, uh, let me ask you this: uh, doing the uh, recruiter process. Uh, what do you guys look at yeah. as far? What do you guys look at as far as bringing a potential driver on? Uh, do you guys look at his DAT report? Do you guys look at his PSP, or do you guys just mm-hmm. look at the PSP? What What are you guys? What are you guys look at and look for in bringing on a potential driver? So we we do run it all. Um, we are pretty particular about safety. Um, we increase our hiring requirements. So right now we're bringing on drivers that have a year experience or more. Uh, we do look at the DAC, the TSP. Uh, big, the biggest thing is kind of like, you know, tickets and accidents. We look at those and um, we definitely compare it to what your experience level is. So somebody who's maybe only got a year of experience, we want to make sure that um, their safety record is pretty clear. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're kind of particular about those kinds of things make sure it's a good culture fit we do do background checks and drug tests um because we want to make sure we limit our liability on the road as well okay that's what's up i got i got one last question and it's pertaining to uh yeah. to the DAC report now the DAC report is uh is information pertaining from different companies that a driver has has previously worked for uh let's mm-hmm. say let's say that it was uh, you know the company a put like scrimmage information on that person's DAC report will you guys give that driver an opportunity to explain that or are you guys just going to just use the DAC report as the bible of what y'all going to bring in regardless so 
I, I try to say we look at things holistically. Um, so if there's something on your doc report, if you're a great, if you've got great experience, your safety record is great, and somebody has one thing on your DAC report that is less than stellar. Um, you know, we're going to, our recruiters, I, I'm going to promise you right now, our recruiters are going to fight to get a good driver in the door. Okay. And so, you know, we're going to listen to it. Now, everything is taken into context. So if there's some safety issues um, with the safety record, and then you also have, say, an abandonment on your DAC, it's probably going to disqualify you. And we definitely help. We tell you where to go to see if you can cite that information that's on there. But we do try to take a whole look at who the person is and if they would be a good fit. All right. All right. All right. Well, everybody, man, again, thank you, Bianca, for coming on. Uh, she is the marketing and media manager for Hirschbach. And there you have it, y'all. There you have it. She came in and uh, did some clarification. <laughs> you can't get no better than that. You cannot get no better than that, man. I mean, I, I really appreciate you coming in, taking the time, and and letting and letting the, letting the people know what the company is all about. You know, and this and yeah, this absolutely. is what and this is what drivers are looking for. They they looking for for people like you to come in and just and just be honest with them. Just be honest with them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so absolutely. I appreciate you coming in uh, and 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 providing your honesty. Thank you. You're very welcome. Anytime. All right, all right. So that was Bianca. Yo, I'm the sh I'm I'm lockout man. That's that's what I do for you guys. I bring I, I bring the good podcast interviews, the good podcast for you guys. If you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more. That's what you do. You hit that bell for more. And if you want to get in contact with me, just like Bianca did, uh, hit me up in the Gmail, lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com. Hit that phone number for me, 216 no, 216 or come over to Instagram and hit me up over there, man. I am your humble host, Lockout Men. That was Miss Bianca Sanchez of Hirschbach. And on that note, we are gone.